You can walk into a coffee shop, a massage spa, or even a doggy daycare and walk out with something infused with CBD. This cannabis compound, which some claim can help with pain, anxiety, or other ailments, has sparked a, a, a green rush in the U.S. Sales for CBD, or cannabidiol as it's called, are expected to grow from $1 billion to $20 billion within the next three years. But if you don't do your homework, those lotions or lattes could land you in deep trouble. Even in places where medical or recreational weed is legal, and even though the 2018 Farm Bill removed restrictions from CBD if it's derived from hemp plants. I mean, just look at all the confusion that remains among federal agencies. As of early July 2019, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says states can't block the trade of hemp plants. But if you sell CBD from those same plants in any health or food products, the Food and Drug Administration could technically come after you for violating interstate commerce laws. And don't even get me started on state cannabis laws. Finding legal CBD is way harder than you think, so we packed our bags and headed back to school namely to the University of Connecticut. In January, UConn launched the nation's only college course that gives hands-on experience with growing cannabis plants. Graduate student Peter Apicella and research grower Shelley Durocher showed us around their greenhouse. The stems are really purple. It's a nice, tall, upright plant. The leaflets are very narrow on each individual leaf. The class only grows hemp which is like marijuana's straight edge twin. All cannabis varieties, including hemp and marijuana, fall under one species, cannabis sativa. The main difference is marijuana makes high quantities of THC tetrahydrocannabinol, which is federally illegal. Industrial hemp, under federal law, shouldn't contain more than 0.3% THC. But plants aren't very good at following guidelines. Even within hemp cultivars, there's a lot of variation as far as the morphology of the leaves. So that's where you start to see some of the um, variability in different levels of THC and of CBDs. A hemp crop can start off making only CBD and then unwittingly turn into a THC-laden field of marijuana. That's right, a hemp crop can become marijuana. And if your CBD comes from a marijuana plant, selling it and buying it is a federal crime. That's why under the 2018 Farm Bill, hemp farms must submit to state or federal inspections. These mix-ups are created by the basic biology behind THC and CBD, which are both cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are plant oils, and cannabis comes packed with more than 100 versions of them. Scientists suspect cannabinoids protect the plant from UV rays, much like sunscreen does for the human skin. They think that because up to a quarter of a cannabis plant's weight can be just cannabinoids, and cannabinoid levels change with light exposure. You'll have more cannabinoids with more light at the top of the plant. You'd get more cannabinoids compared to like from flowers that are at the lower end of the plant. A cannabinoid starts out as a bit of sugar that hitchhikes around the plant's enzymes, changing its identity bit by bit with each ride. Eventually, this wandering sugar can bum a ride from one of two enzymes, THCA synthase or CBDA synthase. One ride leads to becoming THC, the other to CBD. Except in hemp, THC synthase is genetically dormant. That's why hemp plants can make loads of CBD and little to no THC a habit that will continue as long as the plants don't pollinate each other. When the plants do reproduce, their traits mix, and those once dormant genes can suddenly be replaced with active ones. Studies have found if two hemp plants that purely make CBD hook up, most of their offspring will be able to make THC. In fact, some of those seedlings will only make THC. Any biological organism is gonna fluctuate. And that's something like farmers are always, and growers are always like really concerned about, that fluctuation. If an inspection catches marijuana in a hemp field, then a whole crop could be lost. That's why Yukon's cannabis class only grows female hemp plants. This is a pre-flower, and it's a very small pistil. Since it's, uh, since it's this little tiny white hair, we know pretty certainly that it's a female. 
and they're all clones. You snip a part of a plant off, you put it in soil with a little rooting hormone, and that cutting is actually genetically identical to that, to that first mother plant that you took from. And so these are all genetically identical to uh, one of the mother plants we have in here. Keeping a greenhouse all female is easy, but it's a different story growing hemp outdoors. Cannabis is abundant in the wild, meaning an outdoor hemp field is just one gust of pollen away from accidentally breeding marijuana. So before you buy, ask the store how its extracts were made and if they were validated by a third-party tester. That's important because extracting CBD or THC from cannabis plants is essentially the same process. If your supplier does it incorrectly, your CBD bottle might carry a little surprise. It, it happens all the time. Sometimes there is CBD, a lot of times there's not CBD. Sometimes it even contains THC in the bottle when it's not supposed to. It's really, it's a crapshoot. That's the voice of Reno Farisi, COO of the medical marijuana extractor CT Pharma. And he's tired of tainted CBD flooding the market. Under Connecticut law, their company must ensure their products match the labels on their bottles, which they accomplish through pharmaceutical grade extraction. Using liquid carbon dioxide or ethanol, they can strip the cannabinoids from the plant material in a process that's similar to distilling liquor. Add a little heat and all the carbon dioxide and ethanol evaporate away. Specific temperatures can isolate CBD and THC on their own. But Reno said many CBD producers don't take these necessary steps with extraction. Okay, we're back in the office. Let's recap. If you buy CBD and it came from a hemp plant and it's pure, then you're in the clear. Not quite. The FDA has prohibited the sale of CBD in any unapproved health products, dietary supplements, or food, which literally means everything except for one approved epilepsy drug is banned. The Drug Enforcement Agency also still considers CBD a Schedule I drug unless it is in FDA-approved medicines. So why do we still see so much CBD on shelves? Well, what a lot of consumers don't realize is federal agencies aren't exactly on top of policing those CBD products that you see in a gas station or convenience store. Meanwhile, as those infractions go overlooked, many states in the district have moved to decriminalize cannabis products like CBD. The result is a limbo where hemp-derived CBD is mostly illicit, but only if someone is watching. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Seacon Akpan.